uh, not exactly uh, a whole number or something like that because it's not picking up all the numbers, which either means that it's not picking up one of these numbers or that there's some numbers that are actually higher than 100. So we could use a formula to try to make these all, all uh, exactly rounded numbers, but I find the other way we could do this, I'm gonna delete this data, is to use the frequency, which is a spill array formula instead. So the frequency equals the frequency tab, and then we want the data array which is gonna be here. I'm in uh, D2, control shift. I'm holding control shift down arrow, takes me to the bottom. Then I'm gonna hold down control and backspace to bring me back up. And then comma, the next argument are the bends, which are gonna be these bends. It's gonna look for these bends, control shift down. And then again, control backspace to bring me back to the top, closing it up and enter and it spills it now. So now we have a spill array uh, type of system. I'm gonna try to remove that last bit so it doesn't do that last one. Double clicking up top and say, what if I clip it at 101? Will it then stop that? It does. And now let's do the total, which will be alt equals, there's 500. So now it picked up all 500 of them and put them into the relevant bends, which is nice. Let's make this a header. I'm gonna to go to the home tab and say this is gonna be black and white, and then uh, we can center it. So now I could graph this frequency, right? So I could say, let's take this frequency, control shift down, control, uh, well, hold on a second. Whoa, okay, Paso. Control shift down. I don't want the total though. All right, I'm just gonna select the whole thing. <laughs> and then I'm gonna insert. So let's go to the insert over here and we'll say that I'm gonna insert a chart. Let's make it a bar chart for the frequency. So there's what we have on the bar chart. Let's click into the chart. Chart design, I'm going to the data up top. So the data is good. I wanna edit this side, however, to pick up my bins on the left. So it picks up my bins and not just some generic bins. Control shift down and then uh, shift up so it doesn't shift up so it doesn't pick up the total and then enter. Okay. And okay. So there we have our distribution and you can see it's a little choppy here. We don't have as, as much data but it looks like it might be conforming to uh, the, you know, the Poisson type of distribution. So it's, it's not gonna be perfect because there's still randomness involved in it. But if we can approximate what is happening here with the Poisson distribution, then we might be able to uh, use that. Now I can also do the percent of the total, percent uh, of total. Let's make this format paint home tab format painter here. I'm gonna take each of these numbers and say equals the frequency divided by the total, 500. I'm gonna make that second number absolute because I wanna take each number divided by the total so I can say F4 and enter. And then I'm gonna make it a percent, home tab numbers percentifying it, and then double click on that copying it down. And if I then double check that everything is done properly, I'm gonna delete this total and sum it up for the double check and it should come out to 100, which is going to be alt equals, will give us that sum function nice and easy. There's the 100. So I could make my frequency, my chart using this column as well. So I can select this column and I could say, okay, let's make our chart based on that. Insert and then charts bar chart, boom, bar chart, boom. Let's do some formatting while I'm here on it. Data are this side. I wanna make sure that this is picking up our bends. Shift up and okay. So, so then we get the same kind of look and feel, but now on the percent basis, as opposed to the whole number basis. 
All right. So then let's do let's take the, the a couple stats on our data. I'm going to make a skinny eye here. Make a skinny eye and then we're going to say that this is going to be the mean uh, calculation. So I can take the mean calculation of our data. So I'll say this equals the average shift nine going to our data, the whole data set and, contr and control shift down arrow and enter. So now we've got it, the, the mean being 20. I'm gonna add some decimals. It's not exactly 20 because remember we used the mean as a condition to populate the data but there's still randomness in the data that we populated so the mean of the actual data that we have is more like 20 point you know 14 uh, potholes per 100 miles and then we can calculate the variance let's do the variance with a p so it equals the variance and we'll take the variance of all of our data set, control shift down and enter. And let's add some decimals there. And you can see it's pretty close to the mean. And that's another indication that we might have something that would be, uh, we can represent abstractly with a Poisson distribution. Here's the variance. If it was a sample equals the variance S of our data and we'll add that a little bit more here so then we've got 1952 so you can see these so now if we're looking at this data we're saying okay so now we're talking we're talking about something that might conform uh to a poisson distribution because we have something that's happening over a certain uh not time element but space in in terms of the road we would think that each instance of the pothole would be independent from other instances of the pothole and so on and so forth and when i graph it it looks kind of like a poisson distribution possibly could fit that and when i pick up the variance and the mean of the data they're pretty close to each other which means that we might benefit from making predictions based on the Poisson distribution curve into the future, right? So next time what we'll do is we'll then do the Poisson distribution, which, which will be a more perfect curve and and do some comparisons and see how, how well that relates to our actual data that we populated. And then think about, well, will, will, will that Poisson distribution then be useful to make predictions uh, as we extrapolate this information into the future for decision-making?